He's the man. He's the legend. He's the scientist with all the answers to all the questions. It's time for another episode of Alex's Science Corner. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. No, please, thank you. Just wanted to say, Brian, you know, when you start laughing during the intro, it's hard for me to edit out because you've got the background music going at the same time. Yeah, you almost <laughs> kind of blew the, it's okay. the intro there, too. It's okay. Gives it character. Yeah, sure. Yeah, What's care. going on in the and, wide, and wide know world? know it's recorded live <laughs> exactly. in the studio. What's going on in the wide, wide world of science, my so friend? So just one story for this week. Uh, we're talking about Beetlejuice, or if you want me to use the other pronunciation, because you guys are getting confused with the actor Michael Keaton in the movie, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, or Beetlejuice, is one of the stars. It's the star, if you look at the constellation Orion, it's the upper left-hand star. It was the 11th brightest star in the sky. It is currently... What do you mean by Was. Well, it's now the 24th brightest star in the sky. And if you remember from a few weeks ago, I was telling you that the star was dimming, and it was dimming significantly. Well, it is dimming, and it's gone from being the 11th brightest star in the sky to being the 24th brightest star in the sky. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up again, because I did talk about a few weeks ago, astronomers have gotten a little more information of a couple possibilities of what may be happening. Now, the reason they've gotten that information is because obviously with uh, the star dimming precipitously, a lot of telescopes have been focused on the star uh, to more, try and see, f figure out. more information. Right, right. Now, the star is 650 light years away, which is pretty far, but the star is massive. If you put the star in the center of our solar system, Jupiter would be inside of the star. That's how large this star is. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Big, big star. Uh, it is so big at... Can, can, mm -hmm. can I just... Uh, when you say you put that star inside, you put it where the sun is. Yes. It that's would what take I mean up... By putting, the, it it that's what I mean by putting it in the center of our solar, solar system. system. It would, it would yes. take up everything up to Jupiter. Yes. Including Jupiter. Yes. Okay. Okay. I just, Saturn would be the closest planet to the star. That is okay. a huge planet. That is a, a, that's a huge star. I was reading about a planet that was so big, it, if you were flying in an airliner, it would take you over 600 years to fly the circumference of the planet. I think there was a star that they're talking about. Yeah, maybe it was a star. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm sorry. So go ahead. So this, this is a very big star. A very big about. star. Because it's that big... They're able to actually pick out some details by taking pictures of it. And so the cameras that they're using, including the very large telescope that's in the Atacama Desert, the European Space Agency's very large te telescope, they're able to pick out details. And the latest picture that they took in December is showing that the star is now lopsided. And... They're trying to figure out why the star is looking lopsided. Okay, so if it's round, how does it look lopsided? Is it oval? That's why the astronomers are paying attention I to got this. It. Okay. okay? Yeah. So it looks like the bottom half of the star is dimmed significantly. Now, one of the things, the first option that they're thinking is that the star goes through this periodic dimming and brightening cycles. And this may be a combination of those cycles. If you remember a few weeks ago, I talked about we took pictures of our sun, extremely finely detailed pictures of our sun. And you see these bubbles on the surface of our sun where you got these heat bubbles. Uh, just like you have water boiling over, you've got cold, you got warm spots and cold spots where the water is going back down and warm spots where the warm water is going when you're heating water. Same thing is happening with the sun. Well, they think something like this ha is happening on this star, except in such a massive scale that it's got like this massive heat bubble that appeared on the upper part of the star. And the rest of the star, rest of the star cooled down because of this. Because heat it was drawing bursting. all the heat. Yeah. Yeah, while well, this big bubble burst, and that is one possibility. Okay, do they? It, is mm -hmm. that similar to um, 
What happens when we get those things off the sun? The never mind. Uh, uh, coronal mass ejections. Yeah, when there's, there's another material. solar yeah. flares. That solar is flare. not um, solar, solar flare. flare. Uh, similar to solar flare, but not exactly. But the next possibility that they're talking about is something like that happening. Okay. That in this darkened region, that there's such a massive solar mass ejection or a, a massive amount of material just got blown off. They've taken pictures of the, I don't want to call it the brief field, but the dust field around the star. And the dust field of, around the star has expanded massively. So the star may have thrown out massive amounts of material. And that massive amount of material is now blocking enough of the light coming from that star that it's caused the star to dim to, dim. to us. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot of that's a lot that's, of Yeah, well, debris. I mean, think about how large the star is, how much material it throw out to be able to block itself. So those are right now the two big possibilities. Me personally, I would lean towards the second possibility, but I'm not an astronomer. Um, but right now the star is still dimming and it's still dimmed. Uh, a lot of people are hoping that this is like a precursor to the star going supernova, which they know this star will go supernova within the next hundred thousand years. Okay. They just don't know when it could go next week. It could go in a hundred thousand years. Okay. Everybody's hoping it'll go sooner because that would get watch a pretty late show. We're all alive now. Yeah, we because yeah, that. yeah. yeah. We, we don't want to wait a thousand, a hundred thousand years to see this thing go super. Yeah, can't have we want to keep it coming back. Yeah. yeah, yeah, multiple lives to so. see it. Um, one question I've got is because light, even though it travels very quickly, and this f star is so far away, is it is there a possibility that what we're seeing is actually the history of this star as opposed to? Yes and no. First of all, what we are seeing, the light that we're seeing right now came to us 600, or left that star 650 years ago. But when astronomers talk about these events, they talk about it when we see it. Okay. The reason is because another observer at another place is going to see stuff differently. Different than what we're seeing. So we always reference it to when we're seeing it. So what we're seeing now is we've referred to it as what we're seeing now. Okay. It happened to that star 650 years ago, but we're seeing it now. That's when we describe it and discuss it. Okay. Now, there's a lot of interesting stuff that happens because we can see what's known as like echoes when light from a supernova reflects off of other stuff. So we can see stuff glowing from that that happens years after the supernova. Okay. So. So we don't think this has gone supernova. No. We just have no, no. Now. It's just, it's a weird thing that's happening with the star. We don't think it's going to go supernova real soon. But, you know, everybody's got, a lot of astronomers have their fingers crossed behind their back about that. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Any final, final comments? Any final questions? No? All right. Well, if you're out there in Radio Land and you have any questions about this story or anything else science-related, you can call Alex right now at 203-837-9924.